Hello and welcome to the Godly Playroom at Pacific Spirit United Church. This morning I'm going to tell you the story, Jesus in Jerusalem, the story of Holy Week. You'll find this story in Volume 8 of the Complete Guide to Godly Play. Are you ready to hear a story? This is a map of the city of Jerusalem at Jesus' time. It was already very old by then. Nobody knows exactly when it was built, but to know, today we know that it's well over 3,000 years old and that it's a place of pilgrimage for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. A thousand years about before Jesus was born, King David came and he took the city from the Jebusite people for his own. His son, King Solomon, built the first temple. The Babylonians came, they burned down the temple, and they took many of the people in Jerusalem into exile. When they returned, they rebuilt the temple. It was rebuilt and expanded a third time by King Herod by the time Jesus was born. These are the walls of the city. walls of the city. This is the temple. This is the upper room where Jesus and disciples, the disciples shared their last meal. At least this is where we think it goes. Because nobody can be entirely sure after so many centuries. This is the Roman fortress of Antonia. This is the house of the high priest Caiaphas. And this is the palace of King Herod.
This is the Valley of Kidron. It ran along the eastern wall of the city. Some people thought there was a bridge that joined the city to the Mount of Olives. Other people aren't sure. This is where the Garden of Gethsemane was and still is today. And this is Golgotha. This is the place where Jesus was crucified and died. Jesus went to Jerusalem many times. He even went as a baby and as a boy. One time, the mother Mary and the father Joseph found him in the temple, speaking with the teachers. This story is a story about the last time that Jesus went to Jerusalem. And it's a story that the church remembers every year during Holy Week. Jesus and his disciples traveled from Galilee along the Jordan River to Jerusalem for the Passover. They stopped in Jordan and there Jesus healed the blind Bartimaeus and he shared a meal with Zacchaeus. When they left Jordan, they crossed the low desert and began the climb towards the city. The night before the Sabbath, they likely stayed in Bethany. When they awoke on Sunday morning, Jesus sent two of his disciples to go and find him a donkey colt. When they returned with the donkey colt, Jesus rode the donkey into the city of Jerusalem. He and the disciples probably passed through the south gate and walked through the old part of town. The shopkeepers were opening up and putting out fruit and meat and other things for people to purchase. The people noticed that something was happening and many of them climbed trees and cut down palm branches which they waved as he passed by. They threw their coats on the road and they called out, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. When they came to a large opening before the Temple Mount, Jesus must have left the donkey there. He and the disciples climbed the limestone slabs that made a street of steps to the temple. 
They probably went through the two door gate, the double gate, because the triple gate was the entry that was just for priests. They entered through into the large open courtyard and they walked across it and went into the temple to pray. When they had finished their prayers, they went back down out of the city and walked across the valley and slept the night on the Mount of Olives. On Monday morning, Jesus probably went back into Jerusalem to the Temple Mount and went in and joined the other teachers in the southwest corner of the court of the Gentiles. There he taught with the other rabbis. People listened to Jesus and they began to gather. The end of the day on Monday, they returned across the Kidron Valley to the Mount of Olives to sleep. On Tuesday, perhaps they came back to the Temple Mount and they went through to the long royal portico where the Sanhedrin gather. Jesus noticed then that the money changers and merchants were set up in the temple courtyard, in the portico. He became angry and he overturned the tables for money changing and for selling small birds in their cages or animals for sacrifice. He implored the people to keep the temple a place of prayer. The crowd continued to grow and the guards at the temple took notice. On Tuesday, Jesus and the disciples returned to Gethsemane, to the Mount of Olives, or perhaps even Bethany, to sleep for the night. As they crossed the Kidron Valley, the people of Jerusalem watched them and they reminded each other of the legend that told of the Messiah coming down from heaven to the Mount of Olives with his army of angels to drive out the Roman soldiers. On Wednesday, Jesus returned to the temple again and as he spoke, the crowds grew and grew and the guards became worried. They knew they had to do something. That evening, Jesus and the disciples returned to the mountain of olives. Perhaps Jesus sat on the hill overlooking the city and watching the sunset with Peter, Andrew, James, and John as they asked him privately what was going to happen. On Thursday, 
the soldiers planned to arrest Jesus. But he didn't come to the city in the morning. When the disciples asked Jesus where they would spend the Passover, he sent the disciples into the city to look for a man who was carrying a jug of water. He would show them the place. The soldiers waited all day for Jesus and the disciples, but they did not come. That evening, they crossed the valley, went into the city, and gathered in the upper room. After they had everything they wanted to eat, Jesus broke the bread and poured the cup and shared it with his friends. He told them that he would always be with them, but especially in the bread and the cup. The disciples didn't understand what he was saying, but they didn't forget. After that, he told them to love one another, and he showed them how to care for each other by washing their feet for them. After that, Judas ran from the room into the dark streets of the city. Jesus and the rest of the disciples left the upper room after a while and walked back to the Mount of Olives. It was very late at night, so dark, and you couldn't see very many lights in the city. When they arrived at the Mount of Olives, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray while the disciples slept. When he returned to the disciples, the soldiers came out of the darkness and took Jesus. Judas was the one who showed the soldiers who Jesus was. The rest of the disciples disappeared into the night. The soldiers took Jesus back into town to the palace of the high priest Caiaphas. The priest questioned Jesus and Jesus refused to answer their questions. Eventually, the high priest tore his robes and shouted out, Blasphemy! And Jesus was convicted of pretending to be God. And so the soldiers took him from Caiaphas' palace to the fort of Antonia, where they kept him in a jail overnight. The next morning when he woke, he was taken before the Roman Emperor Pilate, the Roman Governor Pilate.
Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, It is you who says so. Pilate continued to ask questions. And when Jesus refused to, refused to answer, he sent him with the soldiers to King Herod's palace. King Herod asked him many questions and Jesus did not answer. Eventually, Herod grew tired of Jesus and he sent him back to Pilate. Now there was a tradition in Jerusalem on the Passover that one prisoner would be released. Pilate showed Jesus and Barabbas to the crowd and asked them, who do you want me to free, Jesus or Barabbas? The crowd shouted, Barabbas! And so the soldiers prepared Jesus for crucifixion. They took him along the road and out of the city to Golgotha, where he was crucified and he died. People still walk this road today and think about Jesus and pray. Now they walk from a school where the fortress used to be, along the Via Dolorosa, the street of sadness, to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. After Jesus died, the disciples took him down from the cross. They placed him in a tomb nearby that was given by Joseph of Arimathea. And they put a large, heavy stone in front of the tomb to be like a locked door. On Saturday, everything was quiet. On Sunday morning, it was the women who had the courage to come to the tomb. They wanted to be close to Jesus. But when they got there, they discovered the stone had been rolled away. and that Jesus was with them. In the same way that he's with us today. I wonder what part of this story you like the best? A 
I wonder what the most important part of the story is. I wonder if there's a part of this story that is about you, or if there's a place in this story where you see yourself. I wonder if there's any part of this story we could leave out and still have all the story we need. I wonder where we see this story and how we live this story in our churches today. I wonder what you would like to do for your work today. You may have some art supplies at home, and you may want to take some time to draw or paint or scribble. You may have some modeling clay or Play-Doh or building toys that you want to build with. You may have parts of the story in your home, own home that you want to work with and play with are things that you could imagine are part of the story. Maybe you want to go for a walk or sit quietly and pray or listen to music. Nobody but you knows what your work is. Just remember, whatever your work is, it's your important work. 